about NATO. Um, so there's, I mean, NATO has sort of been in the forefront of cyber for quite a while, and, and when people think about international and cyber defense, they think about NATO. But I want to make clear that NATO itself is not a silver bullet here. NATO is a military organization. And if there's one thing I hope you take away from this today, it's that the problems in cyberspace are not, first and foremost, the military problems. So, again, NATO is useful. And especially useful is the countries in NATO are basically Europe plus the US. And those are the countries that need to talk about these problems. But you can't actually solve a lot of these problems through NATO. So when NATO, NATO says that they have a cyber defense policy, NATO has a cyber defense center in Tallinn, et cetera. That's all useful, but it's very limited. Um, and it doesn't solve a lot of the fundamentals of the problem. Um, and this is also, I want to talk quickly about the US approach. Um, the US um, is interesting because they put a huge amount of resources into cyber defense in particular. And in the US, cyber defense is very militarized. So this is the logo of US Cyber Command. The US is spending about, oh, I don't know how many billions. They're spending three to four billion dollars to build a new building for Cyber Command. That's just a building. That's not the personnel cost. That's not all the sort of stuff that they're developing. And most of this, or a lot of this, is going to be offensive capabilities. It's going to let them hack into Chinese systems, hack into Russian systems, do attacks like Stuxnet, be able to read your mail anywhere in the world. And that's nice for America. It'll help the sort of, it will help a lot of the US's global military ambitions but it won't protect them from cyber attacks. And um, there's a book I recommend everyone get, by the way. It's called Cyber War. It's by um, an American former policymaker by the name of Richard Clark. It's a very good read um, because it really breaks down what we've talked about today. It's about 200 pages, and it's aimed at a smart but non-technical audience. So it really explains how things work and why they're strategically important. And the point that Clark makes about the US is for all the billions that the US is putting in, the US is a 9 out of 10 in offensive capabilities, but maybe a 1 out of 10 in defensive capabilities. And if you think that the US's adversary in the 21st century is going to be China, the sort of grade that Clark gives to China is it's a 4 in offensive capabilities and a 4 in defensive capabilities. So overall, the US is 10 points and China is 8 points. But if you can take your 4 offensive points against 1 defensive point, that means you can bring your opponent to the knees. You can do what was done to Estonia times 10, and then all the offensive capabilities in the world aren't going to help you. So it's very important. Uh, people talk a lot about how there's a huge advantage right now in cyberspace to the attacker. Um, it's, right now, it's the golden age of hacking, right? We've talked about all the threats. We've talked about how hard it is to do something about it. The usual progression is that as time goes on, it becomes easier to defend. But if you don't have defensive capabilities now, um, all your offensive capabilities as a state and a society aren't useful. So I just a note of criticism, because people hold up the US as a gold standard. But there's a lot that the Americans as a whole are getting wrong. This, this is a gross generalization. And there's a lot that the US is doing right. But there's no magic bullet. Um, there's, there's no silver bullet. There's no magical approach. And there's no one country that has a monopoly on doing things right. We're all kind of amateurs right now, that's what it comes down to. Um, and given that we're all amateurs, um, Marius, do you have any additional comments? Yeah, maybe only one, that uh, as in the physical space, the small countries and big countries, as, as Latvia and Estonia, and uh, as of tomorrow, we have 10 cyber warriors. Other countries like the US, China, they have thousands of them. And then, then different countries, different capabilities, and uh, by that, I would like to say that uh, you, can, you can never achieve 100% security. So, given those numbers, so we can hire you know, 100 or how many uh, cyber warriors, if I may call them so. But uh, as we see, there could be opponents of uh, much uh, greater possibilities and resources that uh, small countries could never be able to protect against. And then this is simply to say that you can never be 100% uh, safe and secure in cyberspace. Yeah, I, I, would, I would disagree on the value of those values. But, but what I wanted to say is that since we're all amateurs, and since, it, since ultimately no one's an expert in this and it's all new, with that I would sort of uh, like to give the floor over to questions. Um, and uh, hopefully we can all uh, improve on our amateurism a little bit. Thank you. <laughs>